Diane here. I hope you're well. I am um, going to be swatching brown inks today and I have three bottles here and then I also have five ink samples here. Some I got from Goulet uh, Pen Company, another two I got from Van Ness and then this Platinum Brune Sepia I got from Handmade by Lorelei when we did a recent ink swap. So I am going to swatch those. The three full-size bottles that I have is, they're the Ackerman um, SBRE Brown. Uh, this is very early on in my fountain pen hobby. Uh, it was one of the first full bottle or full-size bottles that I purchased. This is uh, Van Pen 86, and this is um, a bottle that I got from um, my husband and our daughter when they were out at uh, Vancouver for a father-daughter weekend. They visited the, Vanco the Vancouver pen shop and um, got this as a bottle for me. And then I also have three oysters, caramel, caramel macchiato. Three Oysters is a South Korean brand, um, and I wanted to support some South Korean um, ink companies as I identify as a Korean American. So I have those here. So why don't we go ahead and let's see, get started with Three Oysters Caramel Macchiato. What's really interesting is this little triangular cutout of this bottle. And just looking on the website, if you, you know, once you run low on ink, you can have it tilted and rest on that triangle cutout so that you can get the most amount of ink um, in its final, final few drops. Uh, I have my eyedropper here. And, you know, I get with regularity requests or curiosities about this pen or this dip pen that I have. This is a Kakimori glass nib and it's mounted on the Kakimori Sakura cherry wood nib holder and um, I've had this nib mounted on a um, like a Koinor and I'm not sure how you pronounce that but I've mounted it on a Koinor. Okay. It's a warm brown. Definitely reminds me of an espresso or like a coffee drink. Um, in fact, I'll probably swatch the SBRE brown after this just because I feel like they look very similar to each other. Adding two drops. Oh. Not getting a full circle imprint. There we go. Very pretty. Okay, next up is SBRE Brown by Ackerman. What's really lovely about this ink is the marble in the jar. And somehow, well, the marble is stuck right here before, right above that bottleneck. And so you obtain more ink by tipping it. And then when the marble, just by gravity, comes back down and block, it blocks the bottleneck, or it blocks the, yeah, I guess it blocks the bottleneck. And so you have the remaining ink up here from, from where you can obtain uh, or draw up your ink. I hope I said that clearly enough. Oh, it's stuck. There we go. Okay. 
Okay. Gorgeous. So this is definitely more of a reddish brown, whereas caramel macchiato would be more of like a mustard tan brown. Okay, grabbing my glass nib. Beautiful. Okay. Next up, I think in keeping up with the coffee theme, I'm going to grab, let's see, I'm going to grab Robert Oster's coffee or cafe crema. I wonder if it's going to lean, it'll probably look more like caramel macchiato instead of uh, leaning more red, but we shall see. I'll leave that open. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Now there's a certain richness to this Robert Oster ink. Um, I'm going to guess that there's going to be some sheening once the ink sample or the ink swatch dries. Definitely related, related to Caramel Macchiato. Um, caramel Macchiato definitely leans a little bit more yellow. This Cafe Crema has a bit of green, it looks like. I'm not quite sure. So even comparing this, what do you call it, this swatch right here, comparing it to Three Oysters Caramel Macchiato, Caramel Macchiato definitely looks more warm or more red, and then Cafe Crema is almost like a greenish yellow, a greenish mustard. Maybe even more black. There might be some black hints in there. Okay. Now let's try Noodler's Golden Brown, just because I feel like it's very much related to this, these colors here. I'm going to grab a couple drops. I definitely like the warmer browns. Um, I mean, they remind me of autumn, right? And autumn is one of my favorite seasons, or probably my favorite, my favorite season of all. Okay. Oh, now that's very yellow. Look at that, definitely more golden. Gosh, I might even just call that gold. It's definitely a gold ink. Okay, this is Noodler's Golden Brown.
Oh, that's beautiful. Even though there, even though there isn't any shimmer in here, it almost the, the the wet ink swatch almost evokes like a metallic quality. Um, golden brown is as a beautiful, an appropriate name. It's an appropriate name for this ink. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, now I'm gonna go more towards the cooler browns. Actually, platinum brune sepia, I don't know if it's going to be cooler, but it could possibly lean more warm. Uh, so let's give it a try. Well, I mean, looking at this ink sample swatch up top, probably looks most like Ackerman SPRE Brown, but we shall see. Um, as I had mentioned before, this ink was part of the uh, ink swap that I did with Lorelei. Shout out to Lorelei. Hi, I hope you're doing. I hope you're doing well. Staying warm in New York. Here in Seattle, we had some snow yesterday. Uh, we dropped off the kids. Kids went to school, and as soon as they went to school, it started snowing. But thankfully, it stayed above freezing, so we didn't have any difficulty um, driving or the, the streets were, were absolutely fine. Okay. Ooh, it definitely looks more like SBRE Brown. Okay, let's see here. Ooh, that's gorgeous. Okay, now I'm dipping my, oops, I dipped it too much. I'm dipping my glass dip pen in the ink sample. Let's move this cap. Oh, that's pretty. It's almost got a rosy complexion to this brown. Very pretty. Okay. Let's see. Now I have Robert Oster's Melon Tea. Now this, I think just looking at um, the ink through the vial here, it definitely looks more green, almost like a dark olive green. So I'm not quite sure why I categorized it as a brown. Maybe I looked on uh, online just to see how Van Ness and um, other bloggers might have categorized this ink, and I bet they—I bet they did categorize it as a brown. We shall see. You know, I actually got this ink um, back in the summer. I was looking for inks um, correlated to my favorite fruits and looking online, melon tea was the closest thing to watermelon. Um, but then when I received it, um, and swatched it, I, I didn't think it could fly as one of my summer fruits. Um, so I decided to just save it for a future ink swatching video. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's so pretty. Definitely green hued, a green hued brown. Okay. If this is golden brown, this is green brown. <laughs> this is greenish brown. It's very pretty. As it starts to dry, it 
it just reminds me of Sailor's Riku Cha a little bit, how uh, Riku Cha can be categorized as an olive green ink with some brown hints. And this would, this definitely reminds me of the same kind of an olive green with hints of brown or maybe even a brown ink with hints of olive green. Very pretty. Okay, now I have Wearing All Stonecutter's Song. Gosh, just even looking through the vial, it looks more of like a purple, like it's got a purple tinge. So let's see here. Maybe more related to brune, platinum brune sepia. Oh, that's pretty. That's more of like a gray brown. Is there even any hints of brown in there? I think this was one of the inks that I looked online to figure out how I would categorize this ink. Um, and I think I saw that it was categorized as brown, but looking at it right now, maybe like a muddy gray brown. Um, I might even categorize it as a gray ink. Let's see, I wonder how it shows up on the camera. Okay. Wearing All is also a South Korean brand. Stone. I think this is also known as Stone Mason's song, Stonecutter's song. Last but not least is Van Pen 86. Now this is, it says it's an exclusive Van Pen uh, or an exclusive ink. I believe 86 was when the Vancouver Pen Shop was established. This is a Robert Oster Van Pen, Vancouver Pen Shop uh, collaboration. And looking through the vial or the container here, it definitely leans more green. It almost looks like, it reminds me of Robert Oster's melon tea. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna leave it uncapped. There we go. Okay, for the final swatch. You know, using this stainless steel cup, I've noticed that if I swirl it before I twist, um, comes out with more of an even sample or a swatch. Otherwise, if I just quickly go straight to twisting, then sometimes I don't get that even circle. Oh, that's really pretty. Now these three look related. Um, definitely this has a little bit of green. I almost even notice an undertone of pink in here. Okay, dipping it in, dipping my nib in here. Okay. Yeah, this would definitely be related to Stonecutter's song. There's definitely a little bit of a, a rosy, kind of gray brown there, and it's not as saturated as maybe SBRE Brown, at least in the swatch here. But yeah, it's, it's a bit lighter in tone. These two would be, would be familial. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna wait for the ink swatches to dry and then we'll do a close up and um, talk about, well, now I'm gonna wait for the inks to dry and we'll do a close up.
Now the inks, the inks have mostly dried. Um, and I just want you to take a look at how gorgeous each of the inks are. Um, I'm really taken aback by Noodler's Golden Brown. Um, as a close-up, you could see some of the orange, uh, the yellow, the orange, and that sort of ta tan saddle brown that's in this ink swatch. I also just enjoy the, the rosy hue of Platinum Brune Sepia. I have been in a very like vintage -y rose um, color family. <laughs> I've been obsessed with that 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 sort of um, color lately. Um, Terranishi Opera Rose. Uh, there's also Colorverse Brunch Date. Um, a viewer had recommended that color as well. So those three inks are um, just a, a color family that I'm really into these days. Uh, Robert Oster Melon Tea reminds me a lot of Robert Oster's Khaki, which I don't have, but looking at swatches online, um, it reminds me of uh, that this color would be very much related to Khaki. And I am enjoying how these two are very similar. This is Wearing Old Stone Cutting, Stonecutter Song and Robert Oster Van Pen 86. Both have that sort of muddy, muddy quality to them. Uh, Van Pen 86, uh, I had mentioned this in a previous video when I had swatched this ink. It reminds me of like hot cocoa. Um, and then Stonecutter Song has a little bit of like a lavender um, quality to it. Ackerman SPRE Brown is beautiful. It's got that rich saddle brown, warm saddle brown color. Um, and then Cafe Crema and Caramel Macchiato. Um, look very much similar in the writing samples there, but I would say Cafe Crema is a little bit more golden, whereas Caramel Macchiato retains a little bit of that, that warmer, that red, um, feel, I would say. Yeah, there's a little bit more red here, whereas here it's a little bit more golden. Um, but this is really, this is really pretty. I might even categorize this as a gold color, um. So anyway, those are my ink swatches. Um, I would love to know what your favorites are. Um, and you know, even just swatching it in this way, it will show up differently in your pens. And then also depending on which pen you have the ink inked in, it will also show up differently. So please let me know what inks you already have. Um, and what you think about the inks and also any inks that you see here that you would love to try out. Oh, there we go. In, in avoiding the flames over here, um, I just realized by looking at the camera here that I'm missing that you're not able to see these inks on the right as much. So there we go. Um, as far as sheening, uh, none, of these, none of these inks, they don't shimmer. Um, but as far as sheening goes, let's see, you know, none of them really sheen. Um, I think they would all shade beautifully. Noodler's Golden Brown, Cafe Crema, Caramel Macchiato, SBRE Brown, Brune Sepia, uh, Melon Tea, I don't know. I, I haven't inked that up in, in a pen yet, but we shall see. Um, but yeah, probably some shading. I would know I notice more shading shading here on the left side than the right doesn't mean that these four on the right won't shade as much. Uh, I do like Brune Sepia a lot. I did have Van Pen 86 inked up in my Twisby. I think it was a fine uh, a few months ago, and I really enjoyed writing with this pen, um, pen and ink pairing uh, in my Loish term when I was doing the transcription. Still working on that. I have probably 10 more pages and then I'm done. Um, the last 10% always seems to be the toughest um, when you're just so close. There we, there we go. All right, well, take care. Bye.